In my last video, where I had this set pretty well working, I noticed that there was some uh, shadowing in, in the raster on the screen. And at first I thought maybe it was ringing in the horizontal. But I think it's it may be caused by the fact that the aquadeg, uh, this graphite coating on the outside of the tube is no longer in good contact with the chassis and that's very important because uh, the capacitor, this is a capacitor with the coating on the inside and this coating on the outside what it does is it filters the pulses of the high voltage the rectified high voltage because when the horizontal pulses the flyback pulses are converted to high voltage and rectified through the high voltage rectifier uh, it's still it's still a pulsing signal even though it's a DC signal and then the capacitance of this inner coating and outer coating here to ground on the chassis that uh, filters that out so I think that could be one problem and I've got a ground connection to my ohmmeter connected to the chassis and if I touch my probe here I get nothing I get closer to the to the source nothing now I have a couple choices I could take the CRT out and, and fix that connection but I've got this thing all lined up now <laughs> and I really am hesitant to do that I know that other other people who are probably more detail oriented than I am would probably do that but in my case I think what I'm going to try to do um, and I do know the aquadeg does conduct because if I put my probes on the tube see it is conducting however there is no connection to ground and that's important that has to be there to filter those high voltage pulses so that you don't get that interference on the screen so I'm going to see if I can the spring connection is right straight through there and the only real access I have to it is to one of two things to take the tube off. Uh, one thing I'm going to try doing is I'm going to try seeing if I could slide a piece of uh, tin foil underneath there and see if I can't make a, a better connection. If not, then I guess I'm forced with having to remove the CRT, something I don't want to do, but uh, that would be the last resort. I don't know if you can see it in there, but I wedged a piece of uh, folded up aluminum foil between the spring and the CRT. I think it'll stay in place. I don't see any reason why it'll come apart. At least that'll, that'll do for now. But as you can see, I have electrical connection now to the outer uh, coating of the CRT which I didn't have before and that's important so I would say that more than likely that that what I thought was ringing in in the uh, raster was probably due to the fact that there was no electrical connection from the outer coating of the CRT to the chassis Well, I don't think the, sh the tubes glowing show up all that well. This uh, Lone Ranger show is from 1949, year after this radio was so or this <laughs> radio, this television was so new. Clayton Moore. I can't tell you how many of these shows I saw as a kid. 
on an Admiral TV, not not one like this, the later model one, I think it was. But it, I would think it's probably any newer than 1950, that TV that we had. The picture, the performance, of course, isn't the best. I could touch it up a little bit more, and like I say, this could always come apart, and I could work on it again. I'm going to be working on one of my other TVs that I had restored. Uh, I want to put direct video and audio into one of my Zeniths. Those things really buzz, those Zenith uh, televisions, for, especially the early ones. But I think for now, this uh, Admiral TV from 1948 is done. It's in the cabinet. It's in my living room. Looks nice. There's a 1985 uh, Color Track 2000. And this is all playing from my uh, modulator down at the bottom of the cabinet there with a popcorn hour media player. This uh, Dumont. I should really probably look at that next, even though I've got the uh, embassy lined up. I'm not sure. What's really fun is uh, DeForest Kelly, Dr. McCoy is in this uh, 1949 Lone Ranger episode. DeForest Kelly was in a lot of westerns. This camera doesn't do good in low light. Cabinet's in very good shape. All I did was put furniture polish on it. Pretty cool. You go from 1948 to 1985. <laughs> 1985, 1948, 1985, 1948, 1985. Then of course we could go up to uh, uh, that was I think I got that in 2014 maybe 2015. 1985. <laughs> 1948. Well, there you go, folks. Here it is in position. It sure doesn't like text. Wow, that's loud. Well, the picture tube is real tired, but I don't have a brightener on it. I, I took the brightener off. The sound is really over-modulated. Two promoters prey on board housewives and apparently 
somebody that's a sense to convince them they can become great actresses. And they string them along until they get some money out of them, and then they disappear. Still say a woman would have to be pretty foolish to fall for a rat. I don't know what those lines are on the left hand side of the screen. jazzed it up now. The, uh, I think the knob is slipping. Miss, uh, or it doesn't. Uh, no, just a little forward, please. That's fine. All set, Lois? Okay. Hold it, please. Boy, the video quality on this download really is terrible. It looks even terrible there. Oh, it looks like I'm going to lose my, my horizontal. Well, my picture looks like it's collapsing in. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> 